Hola amigos, I'm Alejandro. Welcome to Kiss Spanish. In today's lesson, we're going to tackle several verbs that sometimes students struggle with. Vamos. I have shared all the lessons covering more challenging verbs, and if you have watched them, you know that I'm not just giving them straight to you. No, you need to work for them, okay? Kiss Spanish is not a lazy, friendly channel, so make sure to interact with me. Instead of giving you the verbs straight away, I'm going to ask you maybe to translate, to complete a sentence, or to tell me if a sentence is true or false. This way, when you are presented with the answer, you will learn it much better if you have tried first. Okay? So let's get to it. With this sentence, let me introduce you to my sister, Sam. How would you translate this one? I'm going to give it part of you, part of the sentence. Uh, déjame a mi hermana, Sam. What's the missing verb here to introduce someone? It would be presentarte. Déjame presentarte a mi hermana. Many students confuse introducir and presentar because in English, again, you would say to introduce someone. But the right verb is presentar. And it's not, all no, it's not only to introduce someone, but also can be to show or to give a presentation and many other things. We are just looking at the main meaning of the verbs that cause confusion, okay? So you can also say, debes presentar tu pasaporte en la puerta de embarque. You must show your passport at a boarding gate. And introducir, it is a Spanish verb, but it does not mean to introduce someone. It means maybe to insert or to enter in the computer context. Like, primero tienes que introducir la contraseña. First, you have to enter the password. Or to insert, you could say, tienes que introducir la tarjeta en el cajero. You have to introduce your card in the ATM. So, introducir is a verb, but it does not mean what you think it means <laughs> with introducing someone. That's much better to use presentar a alguien, presentar a un amigo, a tu hermana. Let's take a look at another pair of confusing verbs. Quiero moverme a otra ciudad. Cáceres es muy aburrida. I want to move to another city. Cáceres is very boring. Let me ask you, is this a correct translation? It is not. It's not moverme when I want to say to move to another city. What is the correct verb for it? Pause the video if you need more time to think. It would be quiero mudarme a otra ciudad. Cáceres es muy aburrida. By the way, I disagree, strongly disagree. Cáceres is a great city in Spain. And mudarse is to go from one city to another. Moverse is just to change positions or to move in a different sense. Like, estar todo el día sentado es malo. Hay que moverse. Sitting all day is bad. You have to move. In this context, moverse, used as pronominal form or reflexive, moverse is the whole body. If you want to say to move something, then you would not use the reflexive pronoun. Vamos a mover la mesa a otra parte. Let's move the table elsewhere. And mudarse, again, is to relocate. Me mudo a Madrid el mes que viene. I'm moving to Madrid next month. And I'm going to give you an extra verb, because to relocate can also be thought of as trasladarse in Spanish, which is to take something or somewhere from one place to another. And this is used mostly in the context of a business, for example. La empresa quiere trasladarme a las oficinas de Nueva York. The company wants to move me to the New York office. So, trasladar can also be move, but in a different context, going from one place to the other, especially offices, business, but not only that. And now we are going to get into a distinction that is a bit more complex than introducir, presentar, moverse, or mudarse. This man is saying, podemos ir al restaurante Cebo. Lo, we can go to the restaurant Cebo. Do you know it? What's the correct translation here for no? Is lo sabes o lo conoces? It would be lo conoces. Are you aware of it? Restaurante Cebo, by the way, is one of the best ones in Madrid. So what's the difference between saber and conocer? We use saber to speak about the knowledge of certain facts or learn skills. It's a more specific kind of knowledge. For example, ¿sabes si Alejandro está casado? Do you know if Alejandro is married? Or, 
Sé hablar español, alemán y ruso. I can speak Spanish, uh, German and Russian. And or I know how. So again, facts that are quite specific would be, well, sabes si someone is casado, sabes el nombre de algo, and skills also is saber. Well, conocer speaks about the familiarity with people, places, or things. Conoces a mi hermana Sam. Do you know my sister Sam? If you have been paying attention, I introduce you to her. Te la he presentado, no introducido, antes. So, with familiarity, conocer. And make sure that when you refer to people or pets, you use the personal a. And so, conoces a mi hermana. Before we said conoces el restaurante, but with people you use the personal e. But again, not only with people, you can use it with places. No conozco Cáceres, pero quiero visitarla. I don't know Cáceres. I want to visit it. A good way of thinking about this distinction is to think of saber as things you can assimilate or learn, while conocer is things you have been in contact with. For example, puedes conocer las reglas de gramática del español y no saber hablarlo. Unfortunately, that's the experience of many students. You can know the rules of Spanish grammar and not know how to speak it. So you can, well, uh, have been in touch with the grammar somehow, but you have not assimilated or learned it. Therefore, you cannot speak Spanish even if you know, have been in contact or familiar with the grammar rules. I have to say there is quite a bit more to the distinction between saber and conocer and this, and that's why I made a full lesson on that topic if you want to check it out. But for now, I think this is enough for our first introduction, and let's keep going with more verbs. If you are enjoying the video so far, please give it a like, dale a me gusta. It's gratis, it's free. Another pair of confusing verbs, pedir and preguntar. Can you relate each verb with the appropriate pair? Like, pedir, can you pair it with ayuda, una duda, al profesor, por alguien, un favor, permiso. Again, this time, no seas vago, don't be lazy, participate with me, pause the video if you need to, and try to make the appropriate connections, okay? So, we will be saying pedir ayuda, pedir permiso, pedir un favor, but preguntar una duda, preguntar al profesor, o preguntar por alguien. And pedir and preguntar is a pair that people really confuse. But pedir is to request an object, to request a service, or request a favor. John me pidió ayuda con sus tareas. John asked me to help me, to help him, sorry, with his homework. However, preguntar is to ask for information. And in English, both are asking, pedir and preguntar, and that's the source of the confusion. And you would say, siempre me preguntan por el subjuntivo. I'm always asked about the subjunctive. So I'm being asked for information, me preguntan, but I'm being asked for help, me piden. Okay? So this distinction is tricky. One thing to look out for is the translation of to ask a question. I hear many of my students tell me, preguntar una pregunta. <laughs> preguntar una pregunta, that doesn't sound right. Mm -hmm. You would say hacer una pregunta or just you can say straight preguntar algo. That's to ask a question. Preguntar o hacer una pregunta. Let's continue learning more verbs and this time with a real life situation, unfortunately. I ask a girl, would you like to have a drink with me? How would you say that in Spanish? ¿Quieres una copa conmigo to have a drink with me? You know, well, we would say, ¿Quieres Tomar una copa conmigo. And her answer was, no bebo alcohol. I don't drink alcohol. Which was not true because I saw her later drinking a tequila with a different guy. So, but that's life. But the issue here, it's not my dating life, is the distinction between beber and tomar. Which, again, can get tricky. We use... Also in Spain, it's different than in Latin America. And in Latin America, in different countries, it's also different. But in Spain, beber is to drink in a more general sense. But tomar is to have a drink. So if you want to ask someone to have a drink, you would say, ¿Quieres tomar algo esta tarde? Do you want to have a drink this afternoon? 
and beber in the more general sense, you would say, no bebo café, o prefiero té. I don't drink coffee, I prefer tea. And important to note that when you are saying tomar algo, tomar una copa, it generally refers to alcoholic beverages. And as mentioned, the most challenging part of the distinction between tomar and beber are the regional differences. In Latin America, they use tomar by itself, that is an intransitive verb without any direct object, basically meaning by itself. Like tomas, it will mean in Latin America that you drink. But in Spain, we never use tomar by itself, meaning to drink. You would say tomar algo, tomar una copa, tomar un café. And tomar has other meanings too that you need to be aware of. It's not just to drink, we use it to mean to take, to consume, or to ride a certain vehicle. Like tomar medicamentos, tomar carne, tomar sopa, tomar un helado, tomar el tren. So you can see here the first example, tomar medicamentos is to, to take medicines. And tomar el tren is to take the train, to ride, to, to go for a ride on the train. Mm -hmm. And the use of carne, sopa, and helado, one more time, is regional. That's something in Spain we would say, tomar, especially tomar sopa, tomar un helado. While in Latin America they will be more specific and use comer sopa or comer un helado instead of tomar. So most of the times tomar and beber will be interchangeable, basically both mean to drink. Just keep in mind that to say to have a drink, you would say tomar algo o tomar una copa. And keep in mind also the regional variations that in Spain we don't use tomar as in beber by itself. That's more in Latin America. And in Spain we do use tomar in certain ways that in Latin America they don't, like tomar una sopa o tomar un helado. And let's now continue learning more verbs. Let's take a look at the sentence. Paré de fumar porque... How would you continue this sentence? I'm going to give you two options. Paré de fumar porque venía el jefe. The boss was coming. Paré de fumar porque es malo para la salud. It's bad for my health. What continuation here makes more sense? Well, you would say paré de fumar porque venía el jefe. I stopped smoking because the boss was coming. And what's the thing that causes confusion here? Well, how would you say I stopped smoking because it is bad for my health, porque es malo para la salud. It would not be parar, it would be dejar de fumar. Dejar de means to stop in a more uh, permanent way, while parar is to stop temporarily due to an interruption. Not always the case, but most of the time, especially in the context of a habit. Okay? So, para la música, quiero hablar contigo. That would be stop the music. I want to talk to you. You wouldn't say dejar la música. Okay, no, parar, stop the music. But again, dejar de en infinitive, dejar de fumar, dejar de trabajar, is to most of the time stop permanently or to quit something. I can tell you, deja de jugar a videojuegos. Es una pérdida de tiempo. Stop playing video games. It's a waste of time. The first case, stop the music is something temporary. It's just, it's an interruption. But deja de jugar a videojuegos, I'm meaning the habit of it, just quit it. Right? Stop doing it forever. It's useless. And dejar can be also confused with all the verbs like quitar or abandonar by English speakers learning Spanish. And I made another video talking about other confusing verbs that includes that distinction. So if you want, you can watch that next. But that's it for today's lesson. I hope this was helpful and now you don't confuse these pairs of verbs that sometimes can get tricky. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe to the channel. It really helps. And I will see you on the next one. Soy Alejandro de Key Spanish y nos vemos en clase.